Good day, everyone. I'm Dave. Today we're going to be doing another tool teardown. What we're going to be looking at is the orbital sander. Pretty well everyone has one of these at home. Uh, the base plate we took off, it just has the Velcro, there's nothing there to see. Uh, we're going to open it up, have a quick look inside, and sort of talk about some of the parts that are inside these. I have my trusty screwdriver, and open this up. Orbital sanders are pretty well almost all the same. There's not much difference inside. There's difference in qualities, of course, difference in bearings and bushings and, of course, electric motors. But other than that, they're pretty well all the same. So don't be afraid to open them up, especially if you find one on the side of the road or if you have your own broken. Now, I'm just going to go in the garbage anyways. You might as well open it up, see if you can figure out what's wrong with it, and then order the parts and get it back online. Now that we got the screws all out, and again, they're all the same, so we weren't too worried about using our magnetic tray. Next thing to do is open it up. Um, and if you just try opening it, you'll see it, it is sticking. You can see we can open the crack up a little bit, but not down the bottom, which means this black part somehow is holding it close. So what we have to do is look at that and see if we can open up the black first. And there she comes. We'll take off the bottom pieces first. And of course, always slowly in case there's any loose parts behind it, but there isn't on these particular sanders. Next, we should be able to open up the blue, but if we look carefully, we'll notice there's still two more screws hidden underneath. When you go to open these and you start prying, and what I do is I just try to use my hands as much as I can, and you see that little crack starting, follow the crack down to where it doesn't open, and that's usually where something is hidden. Sometimes it's actually hidden underneath the labels, where they put it there just to make sure they know if you've actually tampered with the tool or not. In this case, it's hidden way down here. And let's pull that out and just have a quick look to see. And even that's exactly the same as what we have previously. At the very bottom here, a little rubber seal right there, which is acting like an elastic band, but it's to keep the dust out of the motor area. That's just locking that in place. Let's just pop that off as well. And this is the thing with tools. Every tool is slightly different. Some of these seals are embedded right into the plastic. In this case, it's a separate O-ring. Um, pull very lightly, very slowly, don't force it. There's the one side off. And for this, you can see there's not much to it. You've got your switch here at the top, which would just slide right out. There it comes. So that's easily replaceable, the switch. You've got your brushes. And again, those look like, there they go, slide out. And of course, the brush is on the spring. So we're gonna let the spring out. Same, there's the brush on the other side. In the middle, we have, of course, our electric motor, our bearing down at the end, and then the orbital portion down here, of course. Well, it's just gonna pop right out. And of course, it's still gonna be wired. Your armature, which is your main, main shaft that goes through, will actually just slide out. And there's your main stator of the motor itself. Now that could be where, or the fact that it's so perfectly, I, my bet is that was actually milled in um, as part of balancing. When they put these things in to make sure they balance properly, they have to adjust the weight and they'll spin this on a shaft and double check and do both sides to get it to the point where it balances absolutely perfect. No different than when you do your car tires and they have to put a weight. Well, in this case, they just remove metal. The stator, which is the outside, is static. It never moves, it just sits there. So stator is static. The commutator, which is right here, which is what your brushes go onto, it communicates the power from here to the electric windings, so it's your commutator. And then of course, this is your armature, which is your main shaft that goes through the whole thing. And for electric motor, that's really all there is to it. And as far as reassembly of the sander, there's not much to it in this particular case. This is probably one of your most simpler tools to deal with. That just drops inside. You'll notice it is loose. It's supposed to be loose. You don't want this rubbing against the inside. You want it close, so it creates a stronger magnetic field. But if it starts rubbing, next thing you know, you're gonna be starting to wear down inside, or you're gonna start getting shorts, shorten out your wires, and so on. So there is normally a fair bit of play. You know, I'd, when I say play, I'm talking, I can probably put a matchstick, a wooden matchstick almost between the two. So I'm gonna drop this down. You have to make sure your bearings sit in the proper spot. The switch goes right back in here. You can see the bend here. This is coming up this way. 
So that's where that one brush goes. You can tell as well if you look at the curvature of the wear pattern, there's the wear. You can see which way the brush goes. Of course, you have to push the brush in. And same thing with this brush, turn the brush, put it in there, compress the brush against the spring. I'll give it a quick turn or two just to make sure everything sits good. And then it's a matter of reassembly. And once we have it closed up, we can give it a quick turn to make sure everything sounds good inside. We put our O-ring back on, which is our dust shield. We put our two bottom pieces back on and we're ready to plug it in and give it a final test. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments again, leave them below and we'll see you next video.